Today, we are going to be doing something that I've never done. We are going to be watching every single movie from a single director. And that director is Jordan Peele. I thought this would be fun to end the Halloween month with some horror movies, a horror movie marathon, if you will. And I thought I'd start off easy for the genre and choose Jordan Peele because he only has three movies is directed and every single movie is a hit. But two of these movies I've seen and one of them I have not. I have seen Nope, I have seen Get Out, and I have not seen Us. The only reason why I didn't watch Us was because it looked too scary. Now for a quick interruption from today's sponsor, Scentbird. Today's video is sponsored by Scentbird and I'm so excited for them to sponsor today's video. You guys probably don't know because this is a over the screen relationship, a parasocial relationship if you will. I love perfume and I love changing my scent a lot. One of my worst fears is being stinky and I overcompensate for that by getting a lot of delicious smelling fragrances. <laughs> if you don't know what Scentbird is, Scentbird is a fragrance subscription. So this means you can try so many different designer fragrances for $17 a month. Scentbird allows you to broaden your horizon when it comes to fragrance. You can try tons of different scents, see how they last on your skin without committing to the full bottle. And with Scentbird, it's flexible. It's there when you need it. You can skip any month if you want to, no penalties. And you can also upgrade to get two to three products every single month. With every fragrance, you'll get a 30 day supply, which is eight times bigger than the normal sample size of perfumes that you get from any other place. So Scentbirds come in this cute little vial and it has a little lock. So you can twist it one way and it'll lock it. So you can put it in your bag without it spraying everywhere. And then when you're ready to use it, you just turn it the other way and then you can spritz away. This scent is the Michel, Michel, Michael Germain perfume in Michel or Michel or Michael. Orange Blossom Garden and French Vanilla. So this has notes of violet leaf, orange blossom, jasmine, French vanilla, and sensual musk. Personally, my favorite types of scents are either florals or warm vanilla scents. So when I saw vanilla and jasmine, it was, I was like, I'm gonna love this scent. It's fresh and florally, but still has that creamy undertone of vanilla, which just makes me feel a little bit more. It matches my fall scent a lot more. In the summer, I stick to floral scents. I really love a floral scent in the summer. And then in the winter and fall, I like to add in those vanillas again because it just gives a more cozy vibe to me and it just makes it, I don't know, I just love it. I love embracing someone in, <laughs> embracing. I love hugging someone in the winter and just smelling vanilla. It just is so, it's so yummy to me. This Germain one is the one that I have been using, but they also sent me three other perfumes. I have the Deck of Scarlet Maximalist, and this one has notes of crisp pear, sparkling bergamot, silky jasmine, amberwood, and whipped vanilla. Let me tell you, I am a, I'm a little smitten for bergamot. I love the scent of bergamot, and that like sparkling, like freshness it adds to it is, delicious. This is Commodity Ross and it has notes of bergamot, ISOE su sup super, I don't know what that is, musk and petite grain. This is a really masculine scent to me, um, which is I'm not as drawn to masculine scents, but this one still smells really good and like, uh, if I could think of a word, hearty. And I also got Catherine Melandrino, Unconquered, and this one has notes of mandarin orange, bergamot waters, coconut milk, warm amber, and white musks. Again, they knew from my quiz that I would love a bergamot scent, a bergamot and vanilla, because all of these have some sort of note of creaminess and bergamot um, and some sort of like flower because that's just like my favorite. I don't know how to explain it. It just, it works for me. To get 55% off your first month of Scentbird, which comes out to about $8, you guys can use my code TRIN55 or just click the link in my description. And some exciting news, Scentbird is now available in Canada. And now you guys know my truth. I don't stink behind this camera. All thanks to Scentbird. Thank you Scentbird for sponsoring today's video. Before I watch Get Out, I do wanna put a disclaimer right here. The commentary that we're going to be doing is going to focus more on the horror elements and it itself as a movie, rather than tackle into a lot of the deep race analysis that the movie entails. As a creator and as an Asian creator, I don't feel like it's my place to speak over that community and take this time to put in my two cents about what 
I believe it to be. You should not watch it and just ignore that part of the movie. Just be like, oh, it's a fun horror movie. You should definitely pay attention to it because it's a primal part of the movie. Even though it is a very important part of the movie, it's not important that I tell you that or I explain that. But without further ado, let's watch Get Out, starring Daniel Kaluuya and other people. Fuck this, we're about to go the other way, I can't. Not today. Yo, come on, bro. This is... Yo! And that was all one shot. I don't know, I could be lying. It looked like one shot to me. <laughs> I could be lying, it could not be, even though I just watched it, but it looked like one shot. One of the best fucking scores ever. Jordan Peele's scores in his movies are so good. I think they're all done by the same guy. I forget his name. So good. The soundtrack for all of his movies just, and then the score just tickles the back of my brain in such the right way. So glorious. And he always has one song in each movie that's like a creepy undertone. Um, this one was Run Rabbit and Nope, it's uh, Sunglasses at Night. Um, so well thought out because they are not really well, not really like widespread known creepy songs. Like it's not like, um, it's not like tonight you belong to me. So it's just creepy enough that I'm like, I don't know this song, but it's sending shivers. It's giving me shiver me timbers, but I love creepy songs like that. I have a whole playlist of songs that will end or begin a horror movie perfectly. It's on my Spotify. It's one of my favorite playlists ever. Yes, it's right. Right. <laughs> the fact that the deer came from the sky. <laughs> like the deer came from the sky. The sky is falling on us right now. Like it did not jump. It literally came from like up here onto the car. One thing I love about Jordan Peele and a theme um, that comes back later in Nope is the animal foreshadowing and um, how do I say this? Animal parallels. I love animal parallels within movies. I think it's one of the like most greatest ways um, to add some ec an extra layer to your story. To me, I think it just kind of makes me feel like I'm watching something like truly depicting a very raw form of humanity, which draws us back to animals. It's interesting the amount of people that come out afterwards and the most of the people that point out those random animals in these movies are the people that don't like it and i just thought that was interesting that that happened with get out and nope do you guys ever think about if the dad was stanley tucci but like not stanley tucci like as an actor but stanley tucci the dad from easy a the same story, but just with the characteristics of Stanley Tucci in Easy A. It, it, it's almost there though. He almost is Stanley Tucci in Easy A, but he's not. Uh, must be What's up, fam? Hey, Jared. Hi, darling. What the fuck is he from? <gasps> He was Banshee in X-Men First Class. You like fish, I like fish. I wish you could, could bite some time to we'll talk about it. it. I'd rather go out with the fish. Like, what is this picture? I'm scared. It's always the first picture on Wikipedia that is like actually so horrendous. Like, what is going on? Strong bone structure does freak me out though, but I'm projecting my own insecurities because I have a moon pie face. Do you smoke in front of my daughter? The craziest part about this movie is that her hypnosis is real. It's not like them doing some scheming or them having some weird technology. She just can do that. And that was like the least, the least talked about thing in the movie, which is fine. I just thought that was quick cry. Sink into the floor. Wait, 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 wait. Sink. Sink. 
Like, how is she able to do that? How can she make people's minds just collapse in on themselves? This seems very supernatural. Like, this seems very otherly. Dude, he... I don't know. I think he should have won Best Actor. I don't even know who won that year, but they shouldn't have. I think Gary Oldman won that year for Best Actor. Ugh. My biggest question for the movie is why did the parents want to be put in these bodies just to do the work of the house and to be the quote unquote like help? That's what I don't understand. Maybe just because they couldn't have that ability to do all of these things for so long that they finally get to do them. So maybe they just want to do them now and it isn't chores to them anymore. Maybe. I'm not positive. Skin has been in favor for the past, what, couple of hundreds of years? But now the pendulum is swung back. Black is in fashion. But the thing is that they all know what's going on. Why are they not trying to be subtle about it? Like, that's my thing, is that they all know what's going on, but they are so open about it. But maybe it's just because they have... I'm, let me use my brain for a second instead of acting like a dumbass. It's because they are so confident they'll be able to get away with it. They don't even have to be secretive about it because they know they're going to get away with it anyways. They've already done it so many times. That's sadistic. That's so crazy. <laughs> But like, wouldn't he have heard that? Wouldn't he have heard all the, the chitter chatter, the murmur, go to zip, zilch, a pin drop? Like, wouldn't he have been able to hear that? Like, they all went, zip, 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 zip. Like, that? With the score behind it. Fucking like, it's fucking like orchestrated so well. And I know I might just be like gooing all over this movie and or people might, might think I'm being a little bit overdramatic, but I really do love the movie. I love this reveal. I think it's perfect. I love it that they don't over explain anything. That's what I love about Jordan Peele's movies is that he doesn't over explain stuff. So if you watch it and you don't understand it, girl, just watch it again. Everything will be explained. If you just pay attention, if you just pay attention, you'll get it. I promise. I promise. And she fucking did it on purpose, dude. She left that little Harry Potter's closet open on purpose. She wanted him to find it. Dude, fucking, they like when they know. It makes that better for them. That's why they're not trying to keep it a secret the whole time. They were waiting for him to find out. They wait till they find out. Like everyone watched this movie and they said, oh my God, how could she just leave all that stuff for him to find? She's so stupid. No, that was on purpose. Literally all the people in this movie have been waiting for him to find out. They've been giving him every single clue to find out. Where are those keys, Rose? You know I can't give you the keys right now. Bruh! Dude, pause right now. Dude! Dude! Dude, 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 dude. It just makes me... Go crazy. Oh my God. Everyone, if I saw this in the theaters, I would be screaming. But I didn't see it in the theaters because I was a big old scared cat. So good. She's such a good actress, dude. I was like, well, the first time I watched this, I was with her. I was literally with her. I was like, like honestly, couple goals. And then, you know, I can't do that, Chris. Bitch. I think about that scene all the time. In this old commercial style that he puts on the retro TV, which also makes a comeback later in Nope, where he has Gordy's Home, the sitcom play. Like it's all, they have a lot of similarities and references and callbacks to them, which is great. This like 
theme that Jordan Peele likes of these like creepy old sitcoms, advertisements, promos, like it's all very um, on theme and I like it. (laughs) That doesn't seem very sterile. It doesn't seem very sterile to put on your mask with your gloves and like touch all your beard (laughs) as you put it on. And why is it candle lit? Who allowed them to have a candle lit operating room? Are you fucking kidding me? There are so many obvious issues with like their their morals, but even just as technical like surgeons, like for the procedure, you're just like not gonna lit, light it correctly. I love it when the final girl gets to release all the anger and like kind of go overboard with their kills. Like even though they know they're gonna die, they're like, I'm gonna fucking kill you, bitch. And I'm gonna make it hurt. I know everyone when they were watching this, their heart sunk. It was like, it was literally like, you could like hear the silence in the room whenever that happened. Like, it was like, fuck. run over her we should have ran over her a couple times hit her with that one two three she needed some streaks some tire streaks on her she needed to be flattened to the floor incredible movie incredible fucking movie every single time every single time every single time it gets better you notice stuff every single time you watch it it is such a great movie. I think it got so much hype when it came out as it should. I think a lot of people were like, oh my God, it's overhyped. I completely disagree. I think it was perfectly hyped. Changed the uh, trajectory of horror. Um, We went through a kind of a horror drought, not a horror drought, but I think Get Out really popularized this psychological thriller horror genre again. Not saying that he's the first to do it. I think it just kind of revamped the popularity for it. Now we're getting a lot more psychological horror movies coming out, which is really exciting. I love it. I love Get Out. Um, And that's literally all I have to say about it. That's all I have to say. Guys, we're on to movie number two which is us. There are thousands of miles of tunnels beneath the continental United States, abandoned subway systems, unused service routes, and deserted mine shafts. Shaft? Many have no known purpose at all. What the fuck are they for? 12 million eyes, 190 Again. million teeth, and stretches from the Golden Gate Bridge all the way to the Twin Towers. With the creepy, again, with the creepy advertisement. He's got like a thing. He has to have this creepy advertisement TV in every single thing he does. Now I'm developing a fear of carnivals and fairs and theme parks because... This is like probably the fifth movie I've watched where someone gets snatched at a carnival or theme park. I'm scared now. I'm scared because also in these videos, like the light, the ring light behind it makes it so my screen is not that dark. So I can see my reflection if I focus hard enough. I think whistling made it worse for herself. I think it made it more creepy than it already was. Um, excuse me. It wasn't a jump scare, but what did she see? So each movie has an animal, deer, bunny, chimpanzee. I'm gonna figure it out. To write, to dance, anything to help her tell us her story. <laughs> I just want my little girl back. Do you think they switched already? Do you think that what that's the other girl that she saw? I guess not because now we're, this is the flashbacks of it. Ew! Is that a robotic spider? Is that a hex, hex is that a hex bug? Don't look. Is he dead? Don't look. 
gotta be kidding me. Oh my god, it's the same guy that was holding the sign all those years ago that was holding up the Bible verse, Jeremiah 11 11. Do I have a photographic memory? <sighs> I'm a fucking genius. I'm a fucking genius. 11 11. 11 11 make a wish. 11 11 is also double of the same thing. Doppelganger number. <laughs> Guys, what the fuck does it all mean? There's not a family in our driveway. Stop it right huh. now. Who is that? Fuck you. Oh, there's a family. Child scared of a family? Oh my god, ew. If y'all are out here trying to scare people, I think you picked the wrong house for that. I think you picked the right movie, though, because I'm scared. Now, I need y'all to get off my property. I'm gonna throw up already, like... Please stop. If they start walking, I'm gonna pass out. Hey, 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 hey! Oh my God, the way they like literally scurried away, I'm like. If I were you. Um. So it goes from Chewbacca mask to like goodnight mommy mask. When the girl ate, her food was given to her warm and tasty. She had to eat rabbit raw. The girl met a handsome prince and fell in love with the shadow. She gave birth to a little monster. Hombre was born laughing. She was being danced it. Oh my god. So basically whatever life you have, there is a shadow version of yourself who has it worse. So invalidate yourself with that. Invalidate your own feelings with that thought. I should have noticed this sooner, but I guess the scissors is to untether them because that's how you split a tether with scissors. Are these beings supernatural? Do they survive the unsurvivable or are they just like creepy looking? But I'm assuming they're supernatural. Guys, we have to be out of here at 10 a.m. tomorrow sharp, so. Hello? <gasps> oh my God. Um, what the fuck? So all the tethers are coming out tonight? So it wasn't just them. But they didn't even give them a chance to speak. They just killed them right away. So what's the difference between this family and the other family? What is going on? Now we're, te now we're battling two tethered? Are you kidding me? I, the only thing I'm confused about is why their family just got wiped out so quick, but the main cast family didn't, they got like a whole speech. Probably because their mom had the experience when they were kids. <gasps> not the for, not the for walkover. <laughs> not for walkover into her own death. That's so funny. Damn. So they're not immortal. They're not like supernatural in that sense. Damn. With a golf club too. Not even like a knife or a hammer. That's a golf club. They just cleared those two twins like it was nothing. Are you kidding? Or we kill them. Then let's make some traps or something, like some home alone type stuff. That way if she The way he's like not taking it seriously enough for us, like he's not taking it serious even though he was on the freaking boat with him. He was in a trash bag and he's not taking it as seriously as we need to. Damn, bitch, she was about to cartwheel again, motherfucker. Why are they so fucking fast? Why are you throwing away your weapons? Why do we throw away the weapons that we have? The scissors are good. We can hide here. We probably got bandages and stuff. Mom knows what to do. <laughs> are you kidding me are you kidding me mom knows what to do mom knows what to do fuck you if my husband said that 
while I was defeating these crazy tethered people, dude, I'd be pissed. I would be pissed. I found my faith and I began to prepare. So like the humans just weren't checking up on the tethered, even though they like obviously were like a danger to themselves and uh, that's crazy. It's our time now. Our time up there. Well, what if they just went under the tunnels to a different country? Then they wouldn't even need to kill anyone. <laughs> That's all that got her? Dude, we had this whole dance for her to just get her with a, a surprise stab. I thought this bitch was gonna get beaten up. It's very intimate though. Hurt you. Is that true though? Like, we saw a whole line of them outside. He took a bunny. I would have too. If everyone was gone, I, I'd at least get a bunny out of it. I'd at least. I fucking knew it. Dude, so this whole time it was actually her coming back to take her own life. Bro. Look at you. It's not my fault she left. That's not my fault she left. Yeah, well, look at me. Look at you. <laughs> and he knows. Oh Will my God. I don't even know what to say. Dude, I think I'm gonna have to watch an ending explained because like literally I get it. Like, I get that they switched places and that was actually her trying to get her own life back. But like, it wasn't as scary as I thought it was going to be. Everyone said it was super scary. I think visually it was a little bit scary. I think if I watched it in the correct setting, it would be a lot scarier. Dude, what the fuck? Hi, I'm Jupiter Park. And today we're going to be watching No. I love it. I love it, guys. Let me know what you think of my Jupiter Park costume. I freaking love it. I just feel like I feel so handy dandy and I feel like the country accent is going to come out during this because it's just like I can't. I have a literal bolo tie on and I'm dressed up as Jupiter Park. Like I have to have a country accent. I won't, but maybe. Pause. I Before we, I, that freaking chimpanzee even comes on screen, guys. <sighs> I, my heart's already pounding super fast because I saw this twice in the theater. And when I tell you, people said that this movie wasn't scary. People said that this movie wasn't really a horror movie. Fuck you to everyone because this was the scariest movie I've seen. The way that chimpanzee looks into the fucking lens, lens, is absolutely chilling sends vibrations throughout my body because it is so goddamn powerful oh my god pause guys gordy's home this is technically juno's because i bought it for this costume but she has been ripping it up um, so it's technically hers, her property now, but I think this really completes the fit. Gordy is home. Do we think Gordy was in the right? <laughs> I oh, Russ went back. Jupiter's claim. Howdy folks, welcome to Jupiter's claim. Howdy folks, welcome to Jupiter's claim. I am literally Jupiter. I don't know what you guys are talking about because I literally look like him. Howdy, y'all. It's my sister, Elle. Yeah. Hi there. 
Oh my god, Steven Yun. I love, I freaking love Steven Yun. He's so fine. Guys, a moment of silence for Steven Yun's attractiveness. People are just obsessed. <laughs> you kidding me? The fact that it's like in a constant loop in that room is so terrifying in its own entirely different way. I don't even know how to explain it. Anna Gosteyer as Phyllis. Sherry O'Terry is Mary Jo Elliott. Scott Wolf is the host, he's me. But of course, the star of the sketch is Chris goddamn Katana as Gordy, and he is undeniable. This is such a good monologue, but it's so fucking sad. And that's why I love Steven Yeun. Even though it's supposed to be him retelling this funny SNL skit, I can feel how sad it is. He's just crushing it. He is a force of nature. He is killing on that stage. Amazing directing and also amazing acting. I think it works so well together. And just that subtle splice of Jupe when he's a kid during the actual time, perfect. Not some scary cut to screams and a bunch of shots at once. It's very minor just to show what it actually was on his face in that moment. It's beautiful. It's sad. It's tragic, but it's so well done. I could rave about this movie for hours, guys. You don't understand. You don't understand how much I love it. What's a bad miracle? Hmm. We got a word for that. Nope. What's a bad miracle? Um, leave your thoughts in the comments down below. If you could summarize a bad miracle, what would it be? Karma? Karma is my friend. Well, I can't even talk about that song in peace because I literally rear-ended someone while listening to it, so. That was a bad miracle. No, it wasn't. It was a miracle that I no one got hurt, but it was bad. She's an actress, model, you know? She booked a pilot on the CW, so. Yeah, fucking left me. Yeah, fucking CW. I love pathetic men. I do. I really do. I don't even I don't I don't even know what to say to you. I just love him like so pathetic. <laughs> just actually so pathetic and something about it is great. <laughs> it's really great. Thank you, Angel. Thank you. Fast for your mother, run fast for your father, run for your children, for your sisters and your brothers. I heard that song on Glee. Dude, when I tell you, this was like a must see in theaters because the sound was fucking insane. It was somehow the most silent thing I've ever watched while also being one of the loudest. Like, the way they incorporated the movement of the saucer, it felt like it was inside my brain. It was the most unexplainable feeling ever. I didn't know sound could be that quiet at some points. Like I, I, I couldn't even, I felt like my thoughts were loud as fuck. Why would Gordy do that? Time to cancel Gordy. And I'm not just talking about the TV show. <laughs> Guys, uh, pause. I just have to talk about that scene because whatever, I like it. Like <laughs> most of the tie-ins that I personally enjoy the most come a little later in Jupiter's last speech. So. We have Gordy's Home, which is a sitcom of a white family adopting Asian boy and a chimpanzee. In this scene, it shows a level of trust between the animal and Jupiter and this sort of solidarity, not necessarily solidarity, but you have this parallel between these two characters um, that they suffered almost the same exploitation of being the spectacles on set, Jupiter being an Asian adoptee 
being a spectacle of the family and not really fitting in and almost being this this entertainer to enjoy and him also being exploited through his career of being the token Asian in Hollywood. Not only is it a great one-on-one -on -one comparison of how similar they're treated, it also goes back way in time to people of color being compared to animals, which all draws into the ties of the movie with aliens, other beings. It all ties in so well and plays into a later fact in the movie this trust between them, this trust that Gordy um, shows him after committing such havoc, um, this trust that he shows Jupiter really plays a factor into Jupiter's actions later on. It's quite a doozy today. Guys, I cannot believe I look exactly like him. <laughs> Guys, I can't believe I look exactly like him. I believe they trust me. If they didn't, I don't think any of us would be here right now. The whole reason why he says that and why he does this is because of the way Gordy responded to him during that traumatic event. Because Gordy showed him trust by not killing him because he recognized the friendly face. And because he displayed that trust, Jupiter now grows up to think that this outerly being this this ex this 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 entity in the sky can trust him and that because of that trust he can build an empire around it can build this whole theme parks theme around this entity by sacrificing these horses he can then exploit this being and it all leads back to the event with gordy the best part of this is that it's not even a full house. <laughs> the best part is that not only are they exploiting this animal, they're also failing at it because there's no one there. Flop. That pure terror on his face was insane. I don't even want to talk about this scene because it literally is probably 20 seconds of the worst thing I've ever seen in my entire life. I've watched a lot of bad things, but this is done so well that it makes me feel suffocated. Ew, wah. Like, I don't even know what's happening. Like, they're getting suffocated. They're getting, like, pushed up against each other. Like, it's just the most awful, horrible like insinuation of what they're going through and it also is exactly how i felt when i would go into bouncy castles if you've ever been in a bouncy castle or a bouncy castle like course where you like go through the different obstacle courses that's what it feels like it feels like you're in jean jacket in the theater that was so scary on my laptop it looked like a mushroom So I think this is a theater experience. Actually, you know what? If I watched on my TV in a dark lit room, I think it would be just as scary. But for me right now, I'm thinking so, cri not critically. Uh, I'm just thinking it's so small and it looked like a mushroom. It looked like a huge mushroom. Well, now I just feel stupid dressed up like the character that's not even in the movie anymore. He died. I hate to say that every single part of this movie is my favorite part of the movie, but are you fucking kidding me? I don't know why, but it almost gives, like with the dancers on the side, it gives a very childlike epic feel to the whole entire thing, which I really adore. I think it's a really, like this release of the the flags, I think it really does give this like childlike feel to it, which feels very epic in a way. Like this just, excitement along with fear is so amazing with jussie out with the jussie with the jean jacket jussie out like literally it's like a mating call almost like literally flapping her wings she sees someone look at her and she gets her jussie out like oh like once you get to the end of it you just think like jean jacket is not an insane predator Slut, like actual slut, like, come on. Stop acting like you're better than everyone else. Stop snapping your juicy at us. 
This is insane. This is so insane. Like that's what kills you? This is what kills you? This? This? Out of everything, this killed you? Pray all praise to Kiki Palmer because this is one of the best ending shots I've ever seen in my entire life. And I know there's theories. He's not alive. This was his final goodbye to her and giving her finally the chance to shine. She tamed Jean Jacket. She defeated Jean Jacket. That was hers to take. And I know it's supposed to be like he died and I get it, but I don't want him to die because then I'm just like sad about it. But I love this ending because it shows nothing of what happens with that Oprah shot. I love it because it proves the point of the whole movie, which is that it's basically all for nothing. You lost so much of yourself trying to chase this spectacle, trying to exploit this beast. And in the end, you lost basically everything. Your childhood home, almost all your horses, and even her brother, even though it's up for debate whether or not he actually died or not and whether or not that was a vision or not. But she's left with the shot. Let me know what you guys thought of this movie. Of course, we already know I liked it. I hope you guys like this. Um, let me know if you want me to do this with any other director. I did Jordan Peele because, you know, Halloween, kind of like a spooky era just happened. Um, and he only has three horror movies. I would do this with other directors if you guys want me to, but leave me, leave it down below which ones you want me to do. And that'll be it. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.